let me bring out this basketball phenom, four-time NCAA champion. So literally, I was joking with her earlier, she doesn't know what it's like to lose. Off the court, she's also really fighting the fight for all of us, fighting for equality in sports, fighting for LGBTQ plus rights, Black Lives Matter, and so much more. So proud to bring to the Buick Huddle stage, Brianna Stewart. <laughs> Woo! Take a seat, Stewie. Ooh, when did Stewie start? Were you like itty bitty? I was, um, well, I was whatever in high school. It stuck. Yeah. Yeah, you're a total Stewie. Total Stewie. You were saying to me backstage that actually it's more nerve wracking playing in the final four than the final game. And I was like, what? Tell me why. The first game is usually the, the tougher one, just like physically, mentally, you get here, it's like final four, this, that, parents, family, fans, everything. And there's a lot of lead up until you play. But then once you're in the, the finals and the championship, you know that all I have to do is go and play. So for, for UConn and South Carolina, I'm sure there's gonna be a lot less nerves tonight. I mean, hopefully South Carolina still has some nerves, but uh, no, I think it's gonna be a great game. I'm really looking forward to watching it. Take us back, what, a decade ago, 2012 to 2016 playing UConn? I know, a decade. Take a me back decade. A, take me back a Let's decade. Let's go back a decade with Stewie. Take us into your world, those final games, those four years. So my first, uh, Final Four was 2012, excuse me, in New Orleans. We had a little bit of a bumpy road at UConn. Yeah. I had a bumpy road at UConn. And we, we made it to the Final Four, and it was just a, a whirlwind experience with, you know, a team that was just young, trying to figure it out. And then from there, it was kind of like, we know, we know how it goes. We know how to kind of get to your win a championship yeah. and, it, and it became the standard. Did you ever have moments where you're like, seriously, did we make it to this final game? Real talk, just us. Yes, just us, but yes. <laughs> uh, no, my freshman year was really difficult. And I think that, you know, for, for most of these female athletes out here and, and college athletes in general, it's, it's not easy, but you know, you have a great support staff, you have great teammates around you that just kind of help you get to this point. And yeah, I mean, New Orleans was a party. Like, yeah. like whenever I go back there, I'm like, it was it's just on. a party, it was just a party. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Just from what I've seen the last few nights with you, you'd be a good time in New Orleans to be going out with. Let me just say, I, she's fun. I'm a good time. She, she's a good, a good time. She's a good time. Do you have any funky pregame superstitious rituals or are you pretty normal? I like, I like <laughs> to think I'm pretty normal. Um, I don't really have any crazy superstition where I need to like drink the water bottle with my left hand or whatever. <laughs> I just like to do the same thing. My warm up routine is the same. My stretching is the same. I get taped at the same time just so I know like when exactly you, you really lock in because you can't be like locked in from now until game time. What does that mean? Like locked in, like in the zone, like that's exactly the only you're like on. focused, like thinking about what you want to do in the game. It's just hard to do it in like a 12 hour stretch. Yeah. So I know the last time when I go on the court is like the time where it's like it's on. It's on, it's all business. You talked about the tougher freshman year at UConn, but is there one moment that's like your peak when you close your eyes, if you could just go back to that moment and relive that high from one of those four championship mm -hmm. games, what would it be and why? My senior year in Indianapolis, walking off the court with my teammates, because we did it. We won the four national championships in a row. We did something that, looking back, I'm like- Four in a row, y'all. Yeah. Four yeah. in a row. <laughs> Who does that? Yes. You do. No, it's something that was really difficult and it seemed kind of easy and was just like, yeah, why not? I'm just gonna, I just wanna win another one and yeah. another one. And now it's like, you see how tough it is in, in college basketball, how competitive this sport is. And I just hope we get back on track. Tonight. Yeah, yeah. Of the tournament so far, what's been your highlight or two that you think have just been awesome? The Elite Eight game against NC State. I was in my house having anxiety. Ruby was like, what is happening? <laughs> I made Marta go and get like this little Yukon hat. I'm like, just put something on her because obviously we need all the good vibes we can get I, right now. So she's not superstitious before a game, but like her eight month old baby's like oh, rocking oh, the Yukon gear. When it's, when it's about other people, I'm like, you don't have your shirt on, you don't have your hat on. I'm like, you guys need to get it together. So for South Carolina and for Yukon waking up this morning, these ladies, like what are they thinking and what are they doing right now? I think what they're doing right now is they wake up and they're like, we made it. Like this is as far as you can possibly go yeah this is the last game nobody else is playing it's just us us i'm gonna be uconn it's just <laughs> us in south carolina and just ready to go out and do everything that you've worked so hard for in the summer the 6 a.m workouts the craziness when the coaches get on you all the things this is your time to kind of go out and, and have fun and enjoy it and based on how the 
semis was with the the fan turnout i think tonight is going to be rocking huge fan turnout i think i saw stats attendance has been doubled let's just even talk about the changes from last year to this year because it's everything from the branding to the refs being paid the same to the swag bags that the men are getting that the women are getting to the lounges and the hotels for the teams there's more progress to be had but what do you think of the progress just in the last year we're definitely headed in the right direction as far as where we need to go and uh, just the appreciation for our sport for female athletes really in general but you can see that that a lot of people are are really getting behind us supporting us uplifting us do you feel that Mm mm-hmm like walking into the games Mm -hmm. the other night I really felt like we were witnessing a shift yeah absolutely I feel like it's completely different obviously we have a new CBA where we're able to get paid more more benefits things like that on and off the court but to see so many uh, companies like Buick yeah uh, get behind us and and really just support us in in all aspects on and off the court is what's what's really important what's the next big hurdle what's the next thing you really want to see the big change oh um, well I want to fly charter. I want to fly <laughs> charter. <laughs> Good for you. Yes. Um, no, but I think the, the next big change is just to continue to have the investment in, in women. TV time. TV coverage. time, coverage, media coverage. It just needs to be like on blast all the time. And that means, you know, really kind of getting into the nitty gritty with, with what we do, with how we are individually. But there's a lot of amazing female athletes, women's basketball players that People don't know, you guys don't know all of their stories yeah. and you should. So it's like, if you see if you see yourself, if you see these women on TV, then there's more of that investment. So that is the next thing that really does need to change. So who did you fall in love with watching play? There was a few people that I, I fell in love with watching. The people that had really similar games as me that I was trying to kind of kind of emulate and be like the inside out presence. Those are people that I definitely have a great appreciation for and just love their game. How can, and I'm putting myself with you guys, right? Like, how can we as fans help you guys keep fighting the fight? What can we do to help you other than show up, right? I think the biggest thing is just continue to support <laughs> us. You know, if you have that friend or that person that's like, oh, I don't watch women's basketball, just be like, why? If you don't, you should. I was just educating a friend this morning. <laughs> she was like, who have you been hanging out with? What are you doing? And I was like, how do you not know? Stand by, sending you, sending you some stuff. What do you do for fun, Stewie? I mean, I hang out with you. That's what I do for fun. <laughs> Obviously, life is a little bit different with a, an eight-month-old with a baby, but we just hang out. We lay low. We brunch. Does the baby have the wingspan? Whenever I pick her up in the morning, she sleeps amazing, by the way. Thank you so much, Ruby. I feel like she's the size of a two-year-old because she's so long. Is she? Yeah. At her six-month uh, visit, she was 29 inches long. Exactly. Damn. So when I pick her up and she's down here, I'm like, whoa. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. yeah. So let's talk a little bit about love. Love. <laughs> How did you meet Marta? Um, Tell us the fiery story. Steve. Yes, Marta and I, we met in Russia. We were playing on the same team together in uh, Kursk, which is a couple hours south of Moscow. She didn't talk to me until I ruptured my Achilles. She didn't talk to her until which, she got injured. I tell her all the time because I'm like, you wasted so much time. <laughs> At least we could have had another friend in Russia, but it, it was really difficult. So many unexpected things. Uh, rupturing my Achilles was kind of like a, um, She's a like, little she bit of a, a baby crash. Uh, yeah. Like, Are you I'm, okay? I'm getting distracted. A little bit of a <laughs> blessing in disguise because I was able to have the freedom and flexibility of not playing. Uh, to be able to see each other but wow what a journey it's been playing overseas dealing with covid trying to see each other and now we have baby yeah okay i know you guys have questions but before we do that who wants to join us in a ball spinning challenge no okay hop on up here let's, let's go. go michigan let's go <laughs> michigan and, uh, who are we rooting for though i'm <laughs> well we'll discuss mm. we'll discuss let's roll warm up your fingers <laughs> What's your name and where are you from? Yeah. Um, Amy from okay. middle of nowhere, Illinois. Oh, wow. <laughs> What's your name and where are you from? Sapria and from San Francisco. So, <laughs> are we are we Yukon yeah, or yeah. South Carolina? I am rooting for South Carolina. Okay. So. Okay. Love that. Love that. If if you're not rooting for Yukon, we have to get another person. <laughs> <laughs>
definitely rooting for you, Pop. Okay, yeah. perfect. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay, so I'll just count you guys in, and whoever lasts the longest. Do we get a warm up? I mean, my fingers are cold. See how it's going. Oh. Let me know when we feel. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. All right, all right, all right. Don't get cocky. Don't get cocky. Don't get cocky. Oh. <laughs> okay, let's do it. On three. Wait, 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 wait. I'm not ready. Hold up. Wait, I'm not ready either. She's like head on backwards. I'm, I'm warm up the body. I'm about to be intimidating. I need to be closer. Okay. Okay. <laughs> So he's like, what, what, you got this? Right? You so can't have to okay. <laughs> okay, count him in, Stewie. Give him a three, two, one. <clears throat> three, two, one, you can't go. Oh. 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 You can't oh. have Well done, well done. You guys both get, we've got some goodies for you. Okay, now this is your turn. You guys sit down, you can ask questions, you can hang, whatever. Who wants to ask questions? We got a handheld mic, we're gonna run around to you guys. Don't be shy. Yes, yes, in the corner. I'm Kimberl, I'm from Ohio, but I uh, relocated here for work. What do you see for your future? Do you wanna be a coach, an owner, Ooh. just an advocate? Like, where do you see? Great that question. Going? That is a great question, it's really difficult. I mean, I hope that I'm able to play basketball for a lot longer. I don't know, coaching seems really difficult. I don't know. But maybe I can be a GM. I can Ooh. just create the team and then they have to do the rest. Then you can get your charter oh, yeah. as a GM. I'll, yes. All, All dreams charter. come together. I like it. I'm thinking about you. Okay, let's go in the back with the, with the phone. My name is Tanya Kelly. I'm from the Buckeye State of Ohio. So what would you tell women who are wanting to break into this business of media? Um, like being a sports broadcaster? Maybe. Okay, you want me to take that one? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> So I, I did it and I've been in hard news for 20 years and what I did was starting in local TV. So I graduated from Chapel Hill. Uh, what? Uh, great game last night. And oh so I, oh, oh yeah, yeah. So I graduated Carolina and I went and I worked in small markets and medium markets and big markets to ultimately make it to CNN. And it's like a tournament profession in a sense because you know, you've got a lot of people starting out small and you're working at all the worst hours. Actually you're working in, not great hours forever, but you love what you do. I'm a big believer in sacrificing and paying your dues, not just thinking you can make it big right out of the gate. So that's what I would say. And I think it, it's sports broadcasting as well is similar. Okay. Yes. Front row. I'm Tori. I'm from Seattle. I want to know what Seattle fans can do to keep you in Seattle after Sue Bird leaves. Please, dear God, I could be a nanny. I have a toddler. They could be best friends. Oh. Please. <laughs> I noticed you signed a one year. Oh, we would like for more. many reasons. For many reasons. I mean, I love Seattle. Uh, being in Seattle, this is now gonna be my seventh year. I'm not sure if you've seen Climate Pledge, but it is an amazing arena. It's, it's a great way to kind of continue to get fan engagement, yeah. but also be eco-friendly. It has more to do with the prioritization than anything, but I'm in Seattle now, and I hope to still be in Seattle for a while. Yes. There you go. There you go. Who else? I'm Joan, I'm from Connecticut, UConn alum too. Are you worried about asking as a mother to mother, having to balance your job and motherhood at the Great same time? Great question. Um, Thanks to the CBA, it's a little bit better. Exactly. Thanks to the CBA, it's a little bit better. I'm not worried about balancing my job and, and motherhood because I have an amazing wife in Marta who is constantly kind of helping me stay balanced, stay grounded, and just a lot of people around that know that, yes, I play basketball and I love to be on the court, but I also have my family and those two are really important to me and I'll do whatever I have to for them. Yes, front row, right here on the end. My name is Yi Chen from Palo Alto, California. The word GOAT gets thrown around mm. way too much and with you winning four national championships, that to me puts you in the front runner spot. Mm. Is this something you aspire to be in? What do you think you still need to accomplish to become the true GOAT? Great question. <sighs> um, yeah, of course I aspire to, to be the greatest uh, to ever play the game. I think that different opinions will give you uh, different perspectives and give different thoughts on who they think is the best. But the best way that I can continue to be my best is make sure that I'm going out and I'm just competing every night, trying to win as much as possible and impacting the game on and off the court. Great question. Okay, one more. Hi, my name is Shimmy. I live here in Minnesota. Um, Ooh, thanks so for having us. Yes, thank, thank you, you for, for having coming. us. Thank you for coming. You've been very transparent whether it's personal issues coming out, your fight, your social justice issues. Is there ever a point where you were concerned that 
hey, I'm going to not get endorsements, I'm going to lose endorsements, and how do you reconcile that? Yes and no. I think that as I'm kind of continuing to kind of navigate the world and just figure everything out, I think the, the best way I can do that is, is to really be genuine as far as what I do, what I believe in, what I stand for, all of the things. And Are if yourself. your thoughts and, and everything like that don't align with companies or endorsements or brands, then it's not my fault.